a good afternoon to you all and i am happy to be back here on the women's show at uh, civic space tv my name is akitengi isabella and it's been an interesting week quite an interesting week and uh, on the show joining me today we have uh, ambassador edith zempala who is with us we also have to my immediate uh, left uh, bashira nantongo and we finally have on the show regina namugerwa and uh, we, so and so it, it's a it's a panel of very happy women and we're going to be discussing the kenyan elections today because they've been in our faces it's been on news they have refused to announce the president <coughs> and uh, i think it's it's a good thing it's a good idea for us to to discuss that today and so without um wasting any more time i'm going to come to the panel and i'm going to ask each of you to introduce yourself and um and where your footing is where do you spend the bigger part of your time and what do you spend it doing you know because these days it's i don't i think it's impolite to ask people where do you work <laughs> because, <laughs> because because <laughs> yeah very complicated no yes. some of us yeah, work okay. but work ours is relative is, it's very relative yes <laughs> and also it may not fit that this the definition the, of what uh, someone might of, consider of, work of the of, of the world order but but mm. it's work mm. you know so yes yeah, so so where do you spend mm. the bigger bulk of your energies uh, during the course of the week and i'll start with you bashir yeah mm. thank you very mm. much akiteng i was mm. glad actually to meet you <laughs> we last met for uh debate Uonet, ah Uonet, Uonet yes. at Hotel Africana. yeah uh, my name is nantongo bashira uh, a former guild president mm. at islamic university in uganda females campus I'm also a former parliamentary aspirant in Busiro North constituency on the FDC ticket um, with a bachelor's in arts education and currently um, doing my master's degree uh, still in education and um, a member of the People's Front for Transition an activist, a feminist. Mm -hmm. I'm so passionate about women and I always celebrate women regardless of our affiliations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I most of the time spend my time, should I say thinking? Because I always <laughs> like to be alone. Yes. And I imagine things happen. I just want to be alone and, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Bashira. Ambassador. Yeah, good morning, good. Isabella. I'm very delighted to see you. I'm thank you. happy to be with these uh, lovely young ladies. Mm -hmm. Um, my name is uh, Edith Sempala, ambassador, former ambassador of Uganda to <clears throat> the Nordic countries, USA, mm -hmm. and the African Union, including Ethiopia and Djibouti. Yes. Um, I am the, the, the national coordinator for the Women's League of the Alliance for National Transformation. Mm -hmm. um, when I returned, I was really not interested in going into politics, mm -hmm. uh, but um, I was, I could not settle. I could not settle just because of seeing what was going on. Mm -hmm. Very disappointed that what many of us dreamt of, mm -hmm. many of my generation dreamt of and struggled for was literally aborted. Mm. And um, and and so when I look at uh, the younger generation, uh, we have not given them anything. So mm. that brought me back to the struggle, mm. and uh, I wanted to belong to an organization that would truly transform Uganda. Yes. Mm. Because since independence, we have had changes, but mm. every change has been worse than the previous one. Mm. So I joined the Alliance for National Transformation because of the values. Mm. The values uh, it, uh, um, of the leaders. I am very particular, once beaten, twice shy. Yes. I am very particular about who I associate with and who I follow in mm. terms of, because uh, people say good things. Mm. about themselves, yeah. about their dreams, about their aspirations, about what they they intend to do. And when they get there, uh, they you know, change. They, they change. Mm. So uh, I was like, how do I now make sure 
Um, the only way to make sure, because none of us can see another person's heart, mm -hmm. uh, the only way to be sure is to look at the track record. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because truly, people do not change. Mm -hmm. It is the knowledge of them that changes. Mm -hmm. Unless, of course, they have an encounter <laughs> with God. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much, Ambassador. Yes. And finally... Uh, thank yeah. you so much, Isabella. Yes. I must say it is an absolute honor mm -hmm. to sit here with you ladies. Mm -hmm. Should I call you ladies of Vala? <laughs> well, it, I'm so humbled by it. My mm -hmm. name is Regina Namugera, as earlier mentioned. Mm -hmm. I am a program officer with Tree Adoption Uganda. Mm -hmm. Yes, we adopt trees. And when I'm not doing that work, I am um, I volunteer with Rotary and Rotaract. I am mm. from the Rotaract Club of Nansana, mm. where I currently serve as vice president. Mm. And aside that, I'm passionate and enthusiastic about human rights and democracy. Mm. And I often tell myself that mm. you can only be silent until you're touched where it hurts. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when someone touches you where it hurts, you have nothing to do, like Ambassador said, mm -hmm. than to step out into yeah. the limelight, yeah. no matter the occasion, mm -hmm. you step out for mm -hmm. as long as you're touched where it hurts. So mm -hmm. I'm so happy to be here and to learn from these ladies and mm -hmm. to share with them. Okay, thank you very much. And I think uh, as we start the conversation today, it would be a good idea to start this conversation at probably a point of celebration. Mm -hmm. And to celebrate is to bring to light the conversation around uh, Nakuru County yeah. in elections. Mm -hmm. Nakuru County has a, an all-female panel, you know? <laughs> <laughs> From the governor to the senator to the women representatives yeah, to five <laughs> members of parliament. Nakuru showed, showed people that that, that this conversation of women leading is possible. Mm. But also, um, while we have the conversation around Nakuru, is to remind ourselves that when it comes to issues of affirmative action, mm. especially in politics, mm. Kenya has not necessarily been the most enthusiastic mm. or should, has not shared, should I say, the enthusiasm of Rwanda mm. and Uganda. Mm. And yet we have a situation of celebration like this. Where? So I would oh, like, I yes. So I'd like to to get your thoughts on what one this means for the broader women's movement, especially given how progressive Kenyan politics is, mm. but also what it means for for Kenya as a general win. Yes. Would you like to go first, Bashira? Yeah. Um, mm. Actually, when I saw that there is a way. It, triggered my mind. I was so excited that uh, me as a person, I support Azimio. Yes. <laughs> but I had to put the Azimio part of me aside mm -hmm. and celebrate a win. Mm -hmm. Because uh, however much we try to reject it, but we have to admit that at a certain point in time, women are so important in this world regardless of uh, the different situations that come over, mm. uh, putting a woman, actually a woman occupying such a seat, mm. these people should test women. I feel like there is a time the world should test a woman. Mm. There is that uniqueness in a woman. Mm. When I saw that, I was like, now Nakuru. I don't know if, uh, was it the, 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 set, the setting previously? With all female? Yeah. No. This was the first of its kind. I think this was the first of its kind, yes. yes. So. It's going mm. to be very good, like mm. seriously. So to me, it means a lot to Kenya. Mm. And I know Nakuru is uh, going to actually register, I don't even know, a number of achievements because bringing women on board, these are mothers, they're going to uh, inspire a lot of young women mm. because we, we grow up seeing... You, you grow up, uh, you actually develop your affiliations or your mindset after seeing some people emerge, mm -hmm. the people you see in society. So when you see a female governor, when you're growing up, you're like, I want to be like that woman. It's possible. So the more women are kept indoors or behind, or the more women are not on front line in terms mm -hmm. of leadership, mm -hmm. it is a huge setback to mm -hmm. these young women because young women always... Um, 
copy or always like to be like those people mm -hmm. on the forefront. So to me, I think it's a big win. So Nakuru is going to be just mm. perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah. Ambassador, your thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> it is interesting mm. that, um, of course, we must celebrate it. Mm. Mm. But it is interesting that it is a surprise. Mm. Uh, when we are supposed to be majority, mm. we are majority, but we have accepted to be minority. Mm. Uh, and, and really, uh, that is up to us. You see, nobody is going to give us the space. We shall have to fight for it. Mm. But once we also achieve it, we must demonstrate that leadership of women makes a difference. Mm. That it is not going to be business as usual. Mm. Because if it is business at you, as usual, then it will really be no difference. Mm. So as uh, my sister here uh, has said, it is, it, it, it is going to inspire many young women. Uh, I hope it can also inspire men and young men. Mm -hmm. uh, because really, uh, women, are, as I said, are majority. But besides being majority, we are futuristic, mm -hmm. generally. Generally, we are futuristic. We are always talking about our children, mm -hmm. our, you know, tomorrow makes, a, you know, occupies a lot of our thinking and our, you know, our consideration, mm -hmm. as opposed to, uh, you know, our the other gender mm. because if a woman has the means there's no way a, a, that daughter will not go to school mm. if a woman is enlightened educated mm. and has mm. the opportunities she'll extend those opportunities to her children not only the girl child but also the boy child mm. you know which is not necessarily the same with the other gender mm. so therefore my thoughts, therefore, is first to celebrate, and uh, uh, but also to encourage to encourage them that the whole world is now looking, mm. and um, the whole world is looking. Mm. They will be judged not even as individuals as most men are judged. Mm. They will be judged when they fail. They will be when they succeed. Mm. Then you know it is. Uh, <laughs> It is uh, Kenya has succeeded. Yeah. Eh? Wow. Mm. But when they fail, women have All failed. The women, they'll, <laughs> they'll come yeah. out as we women in Uganda. Yeah. So, so, so um, therefore, my prayers for them is really that they make a, a impact. Mm. It is not just in, enough to be there mm. uh, unless you can make an impact. Okay. Mm. Okay. Mm. Thank you. I think a win is a win and it deserves to be celebrated. Mm. Yeah. But then we also have to celebrate a peaceful win. Yes. I mean, oh yeah. <laughs> it mm. is a peaceful win and this in Africa is like someone handing you gold. Mm. Peace and wins mm. do not usually sit on the same table. Mm. So I'm actually very excited for that and I'm so 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 happy about women leadership. Mm. back from grassroots where I come from at home back uh, in Uganda where we come from mm. and even in the offices if, or that um, women have occupied women leadership is impressive and mm. it is actually very effectual mm. what has happened in Nakuru is good and it is going to set an example just like the, the rest of the ladies have said mm. it's going to set an example a very strong example how the last time I was here, actually, there was a question of there's, there are opportunities here. Why don't ladies come and grab them? Mm. There, are, there are seats that have been allocated for women, but there are, there are none that come to, mm. to, you know, to fill them. Why is that? And I had a point that you see all these opportunities are now readily available, but even back home, Mm. because of our culture, because of our bringing, because of the things we have identified with, mm. women are still struggling deep down in their hearts. Mm. So when such a thing happens, like what has happened in Nakuru, mm. someone will have a solid example where if they are fighting against other things that might prevent them from coming up, 
and maybe taking on leadership, they'll look and say, yes, this is a solid example. They have done it. I can also do it. Mm. I think it's a very good thing. Okay. Yeah. So we have just had a round on conversations uh, celebrating uh, Nakuru County. And we have also been joined by a fourth panelist on the show, Miss Noela, who is a community psychologist, but also former vice president of the Makere University. And so thank you very much for joining us. And continuing in celebration of, um, of women's leadership, Azimio and the running mate, you know? <laughs> I, for the first time we have a female mm -hmm. as a running mate and that's also exciting news mm -hmm. and for the people who are who are watching hopefully by the time you're watching this show we will have an official declaration of who has won the election mm -hmm. in kenya but we are shooting on monday and so we are still speculating because we are not the iebc mm -hmm. but uh coming back to the panel what are your thoughts on martha karua as as, the, as a possible vice president of the republic of kenya Mm. Yes, Noella. Um, personally, I, I believe it's it's mm. a call to many women in Kenya because mm. previously when he ran, when she ran for president, mm. she barely got one percent yes. of the total votes mm. in the country. So um, this is going to be the first time Kenya is having a female deputy president. Mm. That's if um, Ray Lodinga wins, mm. and. I believe it's going to be, given that we're already seeing the women coming through in, in uh, Nakuru and all that, mm -hmm. it's, it's, I think it's a wake-up call because mm -hmm. um, unlike Uganda, the way, okay, I can't say the harassment and all that wasn't there in Uganda, but previously women in Kenya we are always scared of taking up these positions and because of so much harassment, there is so much... Um, sidelining that the community there wasn't embracing women mm -hmm. and we realized when she stepped up to be a running man to Ryla, there were so many people coming up to to back her mm -hmm. and i i think this um gives confidence so to so many young girls out there to so many women to come out and join her and maybe take up these spaces mm -hmm. yeah Okay, thank you. I'm going to come to Ambassador Edith, and I'm going to come to you on the basis of historical memory. Mm -hmm. Martha Karua has, has pages of, um, of, of her work as an advocate, of her struggle uh, for women's rights. Is there any particular incident around Martha Karua that comes to light and causes you to smile, even during this period where we're waiting for for results so that people can have a sneak peek because because I'm, I'm not sure that a lot of our viewers know who martha karua is away from the you know from the campaign trail mm. but is there a memory that you have of her that you may want to share with us today ah mm. yeah thank you very much um Martha is uh, somebody who has been in the limelight for quite some time. Mm -hmm. She has a trail of achievements, uh, which is very good for her, but good for women as a whole. That is why we are even celebrating her before mm -hmm. even she becomes the actual vice president. Mm -hmm. uh, she is someone who will... Um, not be just she's a running mate all right and she she would be a vice president if the ticket wins mm. but she is somebody who would be still her own person mm. which is not the same thing like we have you know in uh, places like in here yeah, you know yeah. in uganda oh. where you are uh, many women who have been um appointed but when they get into positions, they are just muzzled. Mm. They are muzzled. It is like they don't exist. They are just, uh, you know, uh, a number, mm. a number. But they really, that is why I think most of them have not even had impact. I don't know whether they haven't had impact because they have not been given the opportunity. But for me, you give me an opportunity, I take it, I run with it. Mm. Because at the end of that day, you will be judged for what you have 
uh, how you have used that opportunity mm -hmm. or not. Yeah. So Martha is uh, someone who has been an advocate for women issues, mm. uh, who has been a role model far beyond Kenya. Yes. And therefore, you know, the excitement one is, uh, is about Kenya, by the way. It's mm. about Kenya. I think it is about a leadership, even starting with Moy. Mm. President Moy was not my, my, you know, he was definitely <laughs> a dictator. <laughs> yes. But he's somebody who understood the times mm. and therefore behaved like Morris, you know, you see the clerk in South Africa, mm. understood the times and knew that it was not sustainable mm. and gave in and gave the opportunity for, to the country mm. to move forward. Uh, I, my hope is that even in Uganda, that can, you know, that can happen. Mm. I don't know whether it is possible for it to happen. But, uh, you know, when, when we, they got that opportunity, then they started all over again. The, mm. Of course, they have had struggle. You, you remember the last elections. It was not uh, beautiful. It was very ugly. But they seem to have learned out of it. Mm. Uh, for us in Uganda, it seems like, I don't know what it will take for us to learn. Mm. We keep on talking about our history, but we never learn from it. Mm. And we move as if <coughs> it, it, it never happened. Mm. And, and so, uh, Martha Karua, being a vice president, not appointed, but a, you know, a running, a running mate, mate yes. in her own right. Mm. The reason why I think President Uhuru, when they parted ways with the uh, vice president, Ruto, Ruto, he could not get rid of him because he was a running mate. Mm. He was, you know, people elected two people, mm. you know, a presidential candidate and a vice presidential mm. candidate. And therefore, that should encourage also Martha further to, to, to remain on course. Mm. You know, because for us, you know, the Martha Karua, we are now waiting uh, for the opportunity. Uh, oh, you cannot see that I'm already assuming she's, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she's going to be. Uh, and, for, and for me, um, without, uh, you know, fear or favor, Mm -hmm. I really believe, uh, hope that that ticket would win. Mm -hmm. Why? Uh, because I see stability in that ticket. I see competence in that, spirit, uh, that ticket. I see values in mm -hmm. that ticket. And, you know, we are very excited that the, the, the election has been transparent. It has uh, no tear gas, you no know, mm. shutdown of internet, all those kind of things. Mm. But that can be reversed mm. unless it is consolidated. Yes. Mm. So, therefore, I see in that ticket a consolidation, which I don't necessarily yes. see. see. Otherwise, okay, thank you very much. <laughs> and maybe to conclude on Martha, I we had the opportunity of hosting her mm. early this year mm. in Uganda, and I remember I was doing research on her, and I kept saying, "Wow, <laughs> wow, what a woman! You know, what a woman!" And uh, I think three incidents stand out for me mm. with with Martha. One is the fact that uh, during the post-election violence. She was part of the committee that was established. I think she was chair of that committee. Mm. Part of the committee that was established to ensure that that, that they got to the bottom of, uh, mm. of, of the post-election violence. Mm. And she delivered, you know. Mm. Th that was quite a critical process. And she delivered. Uh, she delivered. And I, and I also know that I, it was either that committee or another committee that she was part of mm. where the Kenyan media kept saying, the only man in the room, and they were referring to Martha Karua, and she was the only woman on the committee. Mm. <laughs> you know? oh, the oh, only woman on the committee, but the media kept referring to her as the only the man, man in, in the, the room. room. <laughs> but I think also the one thing that I respect her for, whether uh, irrespective of how the election result goes, mm. is the fact that she resigned as Minister of Justice because mm. she disagreed with the president mm. then. And I, I looked at her, I kept saying, but we are neighbors. 
Eh? Mm. Was never Zero had the minister <laughs> willing to <be. laughs> <laughs> But Martha resigned, you know? And so when we talk when we celebrate women's leadership today, it's also important that we are celebrating stories as that. And if she came in as deputy president, she brings in such wealth. Mm. She was the first mm. woman to own and run um, a, a legal a, a law firm, mm. you know, in Kenya. And so she 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 comes in, she's not your everyday Nine. woman yeah you know she's she's a powerhouse <laughs> for, for east africa and so for me i am i am actually rooting i i'm not sure that i'm rooting for for ryla i'm rooting for martha you know we, we can and they are running mates yes but if i were to put up a poster it would be her face hmm. on that poster <laughs> and ryla's face in a little poster somewhere down there but coming back to the discussion around uh the kenyan elections okay hmm. The, like Ambassador Edith has said, the elections have been relatively calm peaceful. and peaceful. And yet, if we went back to 2007, 2008, mm. we had one of the worst uh, post-election <coughs> crises mm. on, on the planet. Mm. And we lost close to 1,500 people mm -hmm. in Kenya and also had, um, had about 6,000 people displaced. Mm. The, the the face of that violence is one face we cannot we, we cannot ignore the fact that Raila mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. was part and parcel of that yeah. and so even now despite the fact that um Charles Onyango both says that yesterday right I mean over the couple last couple of days Raila and Ruto have slept peacefully in their beds and like our mm -hmm. situation and we shall come back and discuss how <laughs> presidential <laughs> candidates in other countries sleep peacefully while ours are hiding and jumping trees but uh to yeah. come to have a discussion around the post-election violence do you think that kenya has grown enough um for us not to see a repeat of this mm -hmm. crisis because first of all there's this clear latent conflict mm -hmm. so but, but 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 do you think that we have grown enough or or is it a situation where yeah, we are sitting and watching. Yeah. <laughs> you, would you like to answer first, uh, Bashira? Um, mm. I think uh, Kenya right now, uh, that's what I said one time. I, I always say this to many people, <coughs> that um, there is no way we can hinder change. Mm. Change is natural. Mm. And uh, it, it, it's, it actually, nature blends in actually most of our day-to-day -day events. So the fact that back then we lost lives, people, dis actually that in one way or the other, it demotivates people. Mm. We could also have got a generation of leaders back then. But because of that, one would be, you know, let me even go. Many are exiled, many are, you know. So uh, seeing this... Uh, happen actually because i i saw most of these presidents actually both of them were interviewed ruto and ryla and they actually uh said it publicly <coughs> that we are not inciting any violence and this we are sure even if we are not uh, nani, we are not uh, announced as winners we are still agents of peace and mm -hmm. we shall not incite any words any, any form of violence it's 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 really <coughs> serious mm -hmm. because when we look at our setting here, mm. ah, <laughs> I, I I I actually told a friend that mm. the reason why we are more into the Kenyan election is because now we can freely support a candidate of our choice without being arrested. Mm. <laughs> you set him, Ruto police won't come. Yes. You set him, mm. Raila, they won't. You know. So uh, the first of a kind that people, even in Kenya, of course I've seen some kind of riots there, but they are minor, very minor. <coughs> so uh, to a large extent, this is a big, a big move. It is mm. a very big achievement for Kenya. <coughs> At least they should uh, enjoy this because we don't know what the future holds. Mm. But for now, we need to celebrate the fact that at least people are doing everything normally and they're not anticipating any form of threats mm. or strike or fear of life you know mm. yeah i think it's very good and thank you very much shabir and i'm going to bring in uh regina and i'm going to bring it in in the sense that and maybe we shall come back and have a rejoinder from ambassador mm. when you look at conflict conflict has stages 
mm. you know True. True. um and, and it and it morphs and you cannot know when latent shall become active conflict mm. you, you, you 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 could even miss you know the transition yes. stages mm. True. and given the fact that that uh, the kenyan conflict was was ethnic in nature mm. Yes, um, conversations were held. Yes, uh, pacts, people, the, the handshake happened. There's been voices of commitment. Mm. But these are voices of commitment of two or a handful of individuals that we can see. Mm. Are the remnants of the conflict that sparked off 2000, uh, the 2007-2008 elections still present despite despite this situation. Because also I could liken this situation to Chiseka. If you go to Chiseka right now, everything is fine. Mm. But Chiseka can turn into a war zone <laughs> in under 10 minutes. Yes. You know, so, yes. Becomes you say. so, so what, what, what is your position on this? Mm. Uh, yes, thank you so much. Mm. Um, mm. The thing about uh, change, mm. like you said, is you might never see when it can um, when it has happened or if it is here to stay. Mm. The last time I was on a panel like this one, there is a comrade who kept saying, we are a developing country, we are a developing country, mm. we are a developing country. And I personally had a challenge with that. And I kept wondering, since 1962, we have been a developing country. Mm -hmm. For how long shall we, shall mm -hmm. we be a developing country? Mm -hmm. For how long? What has happened in Kenya now mm -hmm. and in relation to change? Actually, when I think about these Kenya elections, that is what sits in the deepest pits of my heart. Mm -hmm. how, can, how can that have happened? It is so mesmerizing. And it is such an example to behold that maybe, maybe something good is actually happening in East Africa and maybe the rest of the other countries can actually look upon it. Mm. Uh, when you look at um, that post-elections uh, post violence mm. and when you look at what has happened now, <clears throat> I think that is what they call development. That is what they call development in that political sphere. The political maturity mm. with which the president um, candidates have exhibited. Like Bashara has said, where uh, the elector will come and stand and say, there is not going to be any violence. Mm -hmm. And it actually happens. And the other will also say that. And they call a truce. They shake hands not just show the cameras, mm. but they are actually putting it into practice. Now that is what I call really good change and development in that area of mm. politics. So mm. I can't say I can't say what <laughs> might happen in the future. Yes. But I would like to say that mm. right now I'm so impressed with what has been exhibited mm. and I really hope it can last. And I really hope that we as Uganda can pick yes, a leaf yes. from it mm. and also uphold it. Mm. Not, not these things of yesterday, uh, we have agreed that we have called the truce, the Kikuyu will not, I don't know, do what to the law and so many other things. Mm. Then the following day, because you have power to change uh, the, the word documents that called you truce, mm. because you have the power to change its writings, you change it and you, talk, you go on a totally different course. Mm. I think that is the democracy that we need right now. And I think that is a very good start. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Noella, would you like to weigh in on the matter? Yeah. Mm. Um, personally, I, I, I think it's too early for mm. us to determine mm. whether it's a peaceful election mm. or, or not. not. Yes. Because whatever happened in 2007, 2008 mm. happened after, after. Yes. results being declared. So we shall come back here after a week or two mm. to weigh in on the matter. But for now, Kenya has performed. It has challenged so many countries, mm. including the U.S. Mm. And right now we pray and cross our fingers that nothing goes wrong because mm. so many people out there are waiting mm. for a small glitch mm. for them to <coughs> exaggerate the issue and make it bigger than it is. Mm. So it's, it's now upon them because whereas the leaders came out 
and preached peace. We don't know what is in the hearts of these people. Mm. We don't know if people still hold hatred from 2008. Mm. So everything for now can't be. It hangs in balance. Yeah. yeah. So we, we just have to wait for a week or two after mm. the declaration of the results to come back and see whether they fully deserve the credit or they deserve the little credit they have right now. I yes. say we wait a year. <laughs> <laughs> we wait a year. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't even had that yet. <laughs> okay, but yeah, let's, but let's the, weigh in with the ambassador. Mm -hmm. I, I really want to say mm -hmm. that I'm very hopeful. Yes. You know, all these things happen, when they happen, they are clear signs before. Mm -hmm. And it is always related to leaders' mm -hmm. behavior. And... Um, and so far, therefore, I would like... There are a number of factors that I look at. One, I give it to them that they have seem to have learned some lessons. Mm. Two, um, there are certain things which you don't repeat. Mm. It was so ugly, the idea that you had the president, the vice president in The Hague. Mm. Mm. Uh, was not was <laughs> unprecedented mm. and uh, it was not desirable I'm mm. sure uh, in spite of whatever outcome uh, was uh, was uh, was achieved mm. um, I think there is a even even this I like even this slow huh it has been it's slow. It's been so slow. It has been slow, <laughs> but <laughs> it has really tested their resilience mm. and their patience. Mm. And so far, they seem to be behaving well, mm. you know. And I think they are conscious and aware that the whole world is, is watching. looking, mm. is watching. And it is not going to be acceptable. You see, you talk about ethnic, uh, you know, uh, ethnic clashes or ethnic violence. Mm. But when you look at Somalia, Somalia is one ethnicity. It is one religion. Mm. But they found out that they are different clan. Mm. And they have been fighting. <laughs> the same 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 clan. Clan. That's happened in my village. Mm. Yes. So, so leadership really matters. That mm. is why Maxwell said everything Arises falls or fall. rises on leadership. Mm. Leadership is very, very important. Mm. Of course, other things, you know, of course it is still fragile. It mm. is like a baby, mm. really. You know, it is very fragile because it is not backed by a, 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 a culture of uh, peaceful, you know, of tolerance and so forth mm. and so on. So they still have to build that. Um, it is, uh, but... Uh, it is also that the, the institutions are also not very strong. Mm. But I see a determination, you know. When our president, uh, when Vice President Ruto mm. or, or comes up and says it is going to be peaceful, he knows we are all watching mm. because he was in the head. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> he has a lot and, to lose. I'm actually, I'm actually <laughs> tempted to believe. Yes. That whatever is going might actually be influenced by the time they had with the ICC. And uh, the uh, <laughs> yes. So uh, and 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 Mzee uh, um, uh, Laira uh, definitely knows that this cannot be good. This mm. is you know this is <clears throat> probably his last chance. Mm. You yeah. know, and and wants to you know and the the vice president uh, you know Massa would do. Would uh, I am already calling her vice, vice president? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> deputy president. <laughs> I yes. hope I'm a prophet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, so there are so many good things that you can restrain that, and mm. therefore can give us hope, mm. and therefore a new beginning for Kenya and for our region. Uh, so, I want to think, therefore, that the violence will not be there. Mm -hmm. uh, also because the system has been so transparent. Mm. If it had not been transparent, every, all of us, even foreigners, eh, globally, the whole media is, is calculating. So it is not, you know, there, there will not be a reason 
a reasonable reason mm. to say I have been cheated and therefore I, 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 I need to do what, you know. And the blood that was shed, I'm sure many people don't want to shed blood, mm. you know, in Kenya. The, the ordinary Kenyans don't want to shed blood. Therefore, mm. personally, I am very hopeful and I'm very proud of, of, of what uh, is going on in Kenya. Definitely they have beaten, mm. you know. But as you know, Isabel, uh, that democracy is always fragile. It's very fragile, mm. yes. It's always mm. fragile. It is always work in progress. Mm. Every generation must be vigilant mm. to ensure that the gains are not lost and that they can add on. To, for the future. Okay. Thank you very much, Ambassador. And so I'm going to <clears throat> uh, come to probably our last or second last question uh, for the show. And it's a little tied into the discussion mm. that you, I think you started, the one of the, 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 the Luo situation, uh, basically ethnicity. Mm. To, and to say that uh, a, lo a lot of people have described uh, this election as a battle between dynasties and mm. and um and, and what and hustlers. <laughs> <laughs> hustlers. Uh, yes, between dynasties and hustlers. And looking at Kenyatta and uh, Raila on the side of the dynasties. And so given the um, given the inequality situation, because a lot of the ethnic ethnicity will rise if there's a group that feels like it's left out. Mm -hmm. um, given uh, the income inequalities, given the land inequalities in mm -hmm. Kenya, mm -hmm. because we, we, we know that the businesses, the land are held in the hands of, of, what, of traditional families. Would, uh, and, and I know that um, a couple of us from the, way, from the way that we've been speaking probably are Azimio supporters, but does the um, does the provision of dynasties only strengthen the inequality you know within kenya well, is there a guarantee for redistribution of labor i'm mean, sorry for redistribution of power and resources if we continue with the house of dynasties or is the hope of redistribution of resources in a country like kenya uh, lying with the hustlers who are new money new thinking, new opportunities, is, would, would we be risking too much with a, with a dynasty win? And would we be looking at more hope with a hustler, a hustler win? <laughs> yeah, and, and I think that we, we will, yeah. <laughs> I don't, know, okay. I don't know which so, of you would like to take that first. Let me, uh, for me, <laughs> For me, I don't like the hustler business mm. because when you look at hustler, thieves are hustlers. Mm. Remember here in Uganda, Idi Amin came to power and the Mafta Minji business, you know, mm. which was also to say that it doesn't matter whether you go to school mm. as long as, you, you know, you can hustle mm. and get... What you want. Riches. Mm. So it is the mean, the, the end that justifies the means, mm. you know. Uh, and, and I think that mindset is extremely dangerous. Mm. Um, the dynasty is also, or has, uh, is, is also dangerous in mm. the sense that, you know, when you have uh, the haves having so much mm. and the have nots having nothing, mm. That is, that inequality is extremely dangerous mm. as well. And therefore, uh, I think for me, therefore, it is a question of being, uh, you know, w regardless of, uh, you know, we don't choose families we come from. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, regardless of the family you come from, you can have your own mind that tells you that inequality is dangerous, it's bad. Mm. And that, uh, by the way, what really <clears throat> makes a person satisfied and happy in life is not that much. Mm. And that you are more satisfied when others also have, you know, you are mm. more at peace when your neighbors are peaceful. Mm. 
So, you know, and, and when I remember, I remember, for instance, I lived in Sweden as a refugee, and uh, the longest serving Prime Minister of, of Palme, which is very, you know, he, he was, uh, you know, assassinated, unfortunately. But he came from a very rich conservative family, and he was, he pursued justice and equality mm -hmm. like no one else. Mm -hmm. And he made it. He made it. He was uh, heading the Social Democratic Party for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So, at the end of that day, therefore, that is why it is important that the, the, the vision one has of, of life, of leadership, of society, really matters mm. because you know you may have been born in a you know um let me give another live example of, of my own uh, you know the president uh, of and NT. NT. they call him president of mm. NT. actually our leader is a woman yeah. <laughs> she is yeah. he can he 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 comes from uh a background of UPC. Mm. His father was a very close friend of Milton Obote, and he himself um, was the, the, the chairman of the Greater Ankole UPC. Mm. Uh, Mujisha Muntu could have uh, uh, achieved anything he wanted at that time mm. because the opportunities were just there for him to grab mm -hmm. if he wanted to grab them. But he chose from the university to go to the bush. Why? Because he did not think he chose, he left it. I call it, he left the high table and went huh, to the <laughs> to bush. The servant quarters. Yes, to the servant quarters. Because he wanted justice for everybody, he wanted equality for everybody. Mm -hmm. It was not enough that he himself could have gotten whatever he wanted. Mm. So he departed from his family, actually, and went to the bush. Mm. So it is therefore possible. That is why, for me, uh, uh, you know, um, I look at track records of people. Mm. It is very, very important mm. for me, uh, because that is the only way you can feel comfortable mm. that you share something mm -hmm. or you don't share okay you know? and thank you and i think if we had time we'll look at the track record of the two <laughs> <you did not. laughs> uh, as we as we as we look at dynasty but also to say that in this particular case that the face of the dynasty is not a young person who has chosen you know yeah. to walk away the face of the dynasty is a person yes, who has been, been a direct or, beneficiary Yes. of the system of abuse uh, mm. of the, uh, towards the, the average people. But let's listen in. Shabir, mm. yeah, Mashira. Um, actually, mm. I, I also didn't like mm. the timing because mm. um, it's just a matter of mindset. We are all different people. The Wakanda mm. always have a saying, mm. Mm. it's mm. not that uh, what your mother did or what your mother is, you're going to be the same. Mm. I, for one, I would love to actually give an example of myself. Mm. There has not been any lead when I trust <laughs> the, 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 the nanny, the, my, my, the, 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 the family of my, the lineage of my dad mm. or my mom. There is no one like me. No one. Mm. So mm. it's just that whenever I stand, they look at me like, now you what? You get. But then we have a different. Mm -hmm. We have a different mindset. So to me, I guess uh, the fact that actually those people, they term dynasty, um, they also made some tremendous contributions. Mm -hmm. Because Kenya is where it is because of those people. Mm -hmm. They fought, mm -hmm. their, their mm -hmm. parents fought for it. So right now, if <laughs> yes, <laughs> no, I'm not saying. I'm not Aren't you bringing seven in picture? No, it's not that. It's not that. The fact is that we we don't, we actually need to talk about this thing. I don't know. I'm not bringing Moseven because of course Moseven is something else now. Mm. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, when you look at Jomo Kenyatta, he's the reason why Kenya is having independence. So if the son loved the dad and stood, and Odinga Odinga actually died before even being a president, mm. now the son is here. He never lost hope. 
You get? Mm -hmm. It is a very big inspiration. Unlike Uganda, of course, Uganda can't offer anything to. to Wouldn't Ruto be a good example of, of, of hustlership that works? No, it's not. It's <laughs> not <laughs> being. <laughs> no, it's not being like hustlership or something. Me, I'm, I'm just trying to uh, tap on both sides. Mm -hmm. Being a hustler, actually, I just don't like the nani the turnings. But of course, Ruto is not doing bad. You, you, it's standing. Even if you have. You're different from what people think. Mm. Like your character or your ambitions are really different. People might say you're a bad person, but if you stand for your values and if mm. you stand before people and you offer yourself for leadership, we are just sidelining. But him alone standing, I stood mm. in the previous election as, as I was actually still a serving good president. Mm. But people could look at you and they are like, now you. But I'm offering myself, I'm here. Mm -hmm. You get? So we, we don't need to actually tap into a lot of that because people have reasons for their aspirations. Okay. But to me, I would love to tell people that uh, it's just a matter of mindset and values. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be time that is going to tell mm -hmm. whether Kenya is going to lose or it's going to win. And you if get. we had time, we'd probably have a conversation yes. on the value system yes. of, yes. The, of, of the of two the, protagonists, yes. Uh, yes. The, the, the yes. two people who are advancing. And, and just a second, uh, uh, Isabella. You know, when you compare dynasties, I don't know what you're comparing. Is it uh, money or whatever? <laughs> you know, or that your, pro, your, your father was a president and now you're mm. president. I think we must also understand that, you know, Jomo Kenyatta did not hand over. To Uhuru Kenyatta. Mm. So, really, you cannot call it, you know, a dynasty, a, a dynasty in that sense. It was a succession. You know, it was not a succession. Mm. Eh? <laughs> and even, you know, uh, uh, Laira did, did not inherit it from, you know, Ojinga. from Ojinga, Ojinga his mm. father. Mm. Even when you look at United States, that some people give as examples that George Bush, uh, you know, mm. Junior, was, his father was the president. He did not hand over, mm. you know. These guys, uh, there is no struggle. problem mm. with a young person coming up at some whatever. <laughs> And, and also, maybe having been inspired by the father or, you know, having had the opportunities and taken uh, advantage of them mm. and run in their own right. Mm. It is not like here, because sometimes they try to, to compare it here mm. with, the, you know, these uh, projects that are going on. Mm. No, it is not the same. Mm. Because here, clearly, it is, you know, one who wants to hand over to a, you, I mean, to make it hereditary, basically, <laughs> you know, that is, there is a difference and we must not be, allow ourselves to be confused, oh, true. you know. And maybe yeah. one day we shall have a, a longer conversation <laughs> on that because I, I think the spirit, um, mm. that the spirit of whoever coined this mm. was around what, uh, around um, how either around the entrenchment of power and the entrenchment of resources and how those two then provide biased privilege, mm -hmm. you know, to either one set, because now if you look at the ownership of land, mm -hmm. you know, land, in, the majority of land is held by a small group of families. And by mm -hmm. default, if you have access to that, then the, the benefits, mm -hmm. you know, keep mm -hmm. accruing. And, yeah. and, and maybe... In having this conversation, it was to say that is there a possibility that someone from outside the known system, you know, of leadership can emerge? Oh, well, sure. Yes. Mm. But yeah, uh, let's have your, your <laughs> because we're also running out of time. Okay, yes. thank you. Um, mm. To talk about dynasties, actually, mm. is, to, is to talk about ethnicity and all the things that come with it. Mm. But uh, in my opinion, that shouldn't even be an issue now. Mm. Uh, there is this uh, book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And in that book, I phrase, uh, the author says, between stimulus mm. and response, there is the power of choice. Mm. Mm. Despite the fact that the sun is hitting you so, so much, and there is an ocean here and you need to dive in, mm. between that, you can make a decision, either to move ahead, mm. dive into the ocean, mm. or actually dive into the mm. sun. Mm. 
And uh, what what has happened now? Uh, the the talk of dynasties dynasties has come on, mm -hmm. and then the hustlers, of course. I'm not happy with the word hustlers because, mm. I mean, hustlers is something erratic. It's like erratic rainfall. Mm. Mm. When, you're hus when you're hustling, do you mean to say that even when you're in leadership, you'll just choose, ah, man, today where are we going to get, where, what can we do today? Yeah. Let us hustle this. Let us <laughs> hustle <laughs> this. Let us hustle the World Bank. Let us hustle these women with disabilities. Let us hustle this. Let us. I, don't, I do not like mm. that. Mm. We shouldn't be hustling, especially in leadership today, yeah. <laughs> when we have something we can look at. If we have made a constitution mm -hmm. and we say we are going to look at this constitution, mm -hmm. why then should we have that mindset of hustling? Mm -hmm. Let us look at the constitution, let us stand mm -hmm. by it, mm -hmm. despite, um, despite everything and anything. Mm -hmm. uh, then also, that part of uh, dynasties. We are no longer in monarchies. When, you, when someone tells me about dynasties, my mind swiftly runs to the monarchial times we used to have, mm. where a leader comes and because he has established his <laughs> dynasty, mm. he feels that his son is the rightful person to inherit mm. it. Mm. We are no longer in those times. We are in democratic times where someone with worth mm. and belief in themselves that mm. they can actually steer the country into the right direction mm. should come on board. Mm. So... That, that dynasties and what not should totally be dismissed from <laughs> Thank you. our politics mm. in East Africa. Thank you very mm. much. And finally, yes. Um, personally, I disagree with the whole hustler and dynasty <laughs> conversation. Mm. Even that if it was dynasties versus hustlers, we would look at Uhuru, who was having the system mm. clearly rigging for Raila. Yeah. But in this situation, we are looking at yes. at uh, mm -hmm. Raila's senior polling assistant mm -hmm. being chased from Bomas. Mm -hmm. So if it was about who, who is part of what they call the dynasties, mm -hmm. is is giving way, paving way for free and fair mm -hmm. election, mm -hmm. giving the mm -hmm. so-called hustlers mm -hmm. chance to also take mm -hmm. up the spaces. Mm -hmm. Meaning it's not a battle of dynasties mm -hmm. and hustlers. Whoever came up with that conversation, mm -hmm. I think had a hidden yeah. agenda. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And trying to to mm. ride on a sympathy card yes. because if if it was honestly genuine, mm. we would have been seeing Uhuru doing yes. everything, everything in his power, in his power yeah. to make sure that Raila wins. wins. And by now, we would have already declared the winners, mm. right? Yes. If it was a question <laughs> of dynasty, we would have is. waited seven days, mm. eight days. By now, we would have known mm. the mm. winner in like a day mm. or two, mm. and by a range of like seventy. <laughs> Yeah, yes. nothing yeah. like talking yeah. about yeah. Your, your person. Yes, yes. but yeah. why are we having a competition if we are supposed to maintain our mm. lineage? Mm. Yes, just declare and handle the rest the way we do it in Uganda. Mm. Declare the rest, you leave it to the army. Mm. So it's not a question of dynasties and hustlers, mm. it's a question of, of competence. Mm. Okay. So I think mm. everyone came up mm. because they believed they could no serve the, 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 the Kenyan population, mm. Mm. not because. I want to maintain the wealth in my family. Mm. Mm. It was it was everyone's mm. will. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. And, and actually, we've come to the end. Actually, yes. the, the, the word hustlers mm. worries me most. Because <laughs> it's, it's the, the leaders that are supposed to help the hustlers. <laughs> so if our leaders are also the hustlers, hustlers yeah. that is going to happen. And people will tell you I'm <laughs> hustling. Yeah. And yeah. I am a man who will tell you I'm yeah. also hustling. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and we all know that and leaders Nairobi also has a history of theft. That yes. they are at, at, at a point they were called Nairobi. Yeah. At a point, Nai Thief. Yes. <laughs> so the whole country will hustle and yes. it will actually overpower into Uganda. So. I think that's a conversation that we can extend. There's a lot of conversations we've said we could extend uh, from today. Yes. But I'd just like to thank everyone who has watched and uh, the amazing panel that we've had on today. And to basically say that um, may everything go well with the Republic of Kenya. Thank yes. you and have a good afternoon. Thank you.